Hi, my name is Mary. Today FM plays the best music in Lambasa. Today FM rocks. My name is Thomas. I'm here in Nakasi and I like to listen to Today FM because it's rocks. And my name is Milinia. Today FM rocks here in Singatoka. My name is Alkriki and Today FM rocks here in Tawa. My name is Mary Jane. I love listening to Today FM here in Bath. Today FM rocks. My name is Ilay Tiambal and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks here in Osur. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, a new relationship dubbed as Vuvale Partnership. More than 1,000 complaints against landlords received. And shocking child cases recorded in 2018. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spade. Like family, the new diplomatic relationship between Fiji and Australia is now being dubbed a Vuvale partnership. With bilateral talks lasting more than an hour this afternoon, the Prime Minister is emerging to highlight a new step up in diplomacy and a new era of Fijian achievement being given the attention it deserves by our closest neighbours. Maggie Boyle tells us more. It's the most direct line of communication that Fiji has ever had to Canberra, and it's been seen as quite the accomplishment. Prime Minister Morrison and I have dubbed a new Fiji-Australia Uvale partnership, aiming to consolidate our two countries' relations in order to leverage new opportunities and address common challenges. And it appears there has been significant headway in Fiji's new relationship with their Australian family. Security and defence cooperation, including peacekeeping, border and maritime security. To strengthen uh, relations in this area, Fiji and Australia will jointly develop uh, the Black Rock peacekeeping and humanitarian assistance and disaster relief uh, camp in Nandi. Um, Australia University uh, of the South Pacific Partnership will be worth more than $84 million over the next six years, and that is Australia's investment ensuring uh, the tertiary education system that is being provided here will be able to meet future needs. The issues on the table and the assistance being offered up by the Aussies cuts across trade, defence, labour mobility, education, culture and sport. An economic relationship which sees Fiji very much as a hub in the Pacific economy. And that's why we were pleased today to announce um, and discuss the new trade and economic scoping study that will assist inform um, both parties as we work through the PACER Plus program and to also deal with any double tax treaty arrangements which have been raised by Fiji with Australia. While no questions were entertained, Australian think tanks dubbed the historic visit a push to stem China's growing influence in the region. Nonetheless, both the Prime Ministers agree that the tide has turned and the relationship is simply more frank, more open and more friendly. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. Meanwhile, earlier today, the Prime Minister and his wife were accorded a traditional welcome ceremony by the Fijian government. This is the first state visit by any Australian Prime Minister to Fiji. Ritika Pratap with the details. Touching down just before midday, Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison with his wife Jenny Morrison. A rather wet welcome for him and his entourage. Minister for Defence Inya Seruratu on hand to officially welcome him for his two-day visit. Accorded a guard of honor, Morrison was also greeted by the heads of Fiji's security forces. His first stop was the Grand Pacific Hotel, where he met Prime Minister Warenge Beni Marama, before they were accorded a full traditional welcome by the members of RFMF. Morrison thanked Beni Marama for the warm welcome and emphasized on the relationship between the two countries. We are nations of great friendship. But as the Prime Minister and I have discussed a number of times, we are more than that, we are family, a Bali. So we come here today in the spirit of family and thank you for the tremendously warm welcome that you have given us today. Morrison and his wife have a busy day tomorrow as well. Some of their engagements include the National Rugby League event, with Morrison giving a speech at USP before touring the APTC FNU campus. He will also visit the RFMF training camp at Blackrock before heading home. Ritika Pratap, FBC News.
Since 2016, the Consumer Council has received 1,021 complaints on landlord and tenancy issues worth over $200,000. The Consumer Watchdog says the recent complaint was from a university student late last year. Sanyani Boiler reports. The Consumer Council is warning landlords to refrain from exploiting tertiary students by charging hefty rents on poor house conditions. One of the most common issues that the council has uh, received is that they have a binding contract for 11 months and if the student wishes to vacate the flat the landlord would refuse simply refuse to uh, pay out the advance rent stating that you have breached a contract. The council is issuing a stern warning to landlords to cease this practice as local tertiary students and those from around the region prepare to begin a new semester. Council is uh, encouraging landlords to have proper contracts and to issue receipts when students do pay their rent on time and uh, not to take advantage of the vulnerability of the students. Meanwhile, the FCCC wants to have a fair legislation for both landlords and tenants. There are instances where there are certain landlords who are very harsh, there are certain consumers who are very bad, very bad tenants. And so there needs to be adequate protection for both parties. It is a must that landlords provide appropriate conditions to tenants when renting property as people pay good money and expect proper goods and services in return. Sainia Nimboila, FBC News. 748 cases relating to children were received by the Social Welfare's Child Services Department in 2018. These cases include child negligence, sexual and physical abuse, child labour, teenage pregnancy and others. Sainiani Mboila reports the department has made relevant referrals to ensure the safety of the children affected. Breaking it down, child negligence tops the list with 226 cases followed by physical abuse with 149 and sexual abuse cases sitting on 130. Deaths uh, happen because of negligence of parents. Uh, we've had cases of uh, children uh, drowning in uh, drains, drowning in bathtubs and so forth. And this is because when we, as parents, when we don't uh, take seriously uh, the care of our children. Police has also put their foot down, saying it's about time parents act responsibly. Our advice to parents uh, try to, uh, to have more quality time uh, with their children. Eh? So the time uh, children are left to, to spend time with their peers, okay, and um, they uh, follow their peers. Yeah? And uh, also um, on the use of uh, technology. We have been receiving cases from uh, mostly from the hospitals, yeah? from the hospitals, and, um, and because cases are brought to them, uh, then the cases are referred to us and what we do is uh, we refer to the various uh, welfare officers, the ones who go down to the ground and, uh, and investigate. The ministry together with the police and other relevant stakeholders are working on raising awareness to help reduce such cases. Meanwhile, the ministry has recorded nine child cases so far this year. Sainia Nimboila, FBC News. Still to come, committee concerned with public turnout. And more sea days for Navy officers. Details after the break. Bula, never go Malaka Leloma, go in Nakash, on the Wagarong, and Bula Fib, Nabondo, and a serre. I have a six eyes, a lambasa. We have the two men who are going to be able to get a little bit of a little bit of a a The government has signed a concession agreement with Healthcare Fiji Private Limited in Suva this afternoon as part of Fiji's public-private partnership for the Bain Lotoka Hospital. Australian company Aspen Medical, who was awarded the project, will work together with the Fiji National Provident Fund over the next six months as major investors to see the work that is needed to be done in the two hospitals. 
The work will include developing, upgrading, equipping and operating the Western hospitals to raise the quality of their health services to meet full international standards. Group Chief Executive Bruce Armstrong says national health capability development and capacity building will be at the foundation of this partnership. We look forward to bringing our considerable healthcare experience to support the Government of Fiji's strategic objectives to modernise and develop the Fijian health system, particularly in the areas of secondary and primary health care. The Standing Committee on Justice, Law and Human Rights is concerned at the low interest and turnout of the public in its consultations on the Code of Conduct Bill. There was no turnout in its consultation in Lambasa and only two in Savusavu. However, the committee received a number of written submissions. Eleanor Turangaivu reports. The Standing Committee on Justice, Law and Human Rights convened two public consultations in Vonolevu this week. Only two members of the public turned up. We are pleased to see uh, that this bill is finally coming before the House, but unfortunately uh, we feel a little let down and we don't think that the bill is fulfilling or achieving um, its promise. The bill talks about rights, yeah. but no definition. I'm interested to see what rights are we talking about. Uh, human rights? Whose human rights are we talking about? Tabled in Parliament last December, the Code of Conduct Bill is currently put under public scrutiny. The public turnout has been a disappointment. Most of the, the time when general public, they don't attend consultation and when the bill becomes an act, right, that's the time they actually come and start saying that they were never consulted. The committee, however, is receiving a number of written submissions. We were hoping that everybody will come in their various individual capacity on various posts that they hold uh, for them to come and talk about the experiences to help the committee. The Code of Conduct Bill covers all public office holders and establishes rules, processes and procedures that will bring about an unprecedented level of accountability and transparency. Eleanor Turangaiviu, FBC News. In an effort to protect our waters from illegal immigrants, the Fiji Navy is looking at increasing sea days from 180 last year to more than 200 days this year. The Navy commander says this will definitely boost their work and means more visibility out at sea. Savaita Thambor reports. More than 100 foreign vessels were inspected last year and with extra sea days this year, security will be tighter. Having the physical presence out there is a great uh, deterrence to, to those who try and um, do anything illegal out, uh, out in our waters. So we have a maritime border that uh, border us about f five nations, and everything traversing through our borders are vessels of interest. This is one of Navy's important strategy as it deals with the lives of people and protection of our country. In support, police agrees increase in visibility will curb transnational crime. We know that. Um uh, transna transnational crime uh, issues, um, the emerging trends, uh, uh, they are now using our um, seas uh, um, to commit uh, those uh, crimes. That, uh, so the initiative uh, uh, is very encouraging. Meanwhile, during the inspection conducted at sea last year, issues such as not reporting before entering our waters, no safety equipment on board, and other infringement matters were recorded. Sabira Tambua, FBC News. Making every effort to excel in his career and taking his father's advice seriously was Stanley Sharma's priority. As a result, Sharma studied law and was admitted to the bar today along with 21 others. Catherine Krishna reports. There are various ways people find inspiration. However, for 22-year-old Stanley Sharma, it was his dad. Well, what inspired me was uh, he has been in the court system for away around 35 to 40 years now and uh, after school I would come to his workplace or I would stick around with him somehow just to uh, wait for him and then we would go home. Being a judge's son did not make everything easy for him as he also had many challenges. My journey throughout this four years uh, was quite uh, uh, I would say sometimes it was stressful, sometimes it was rewarding. Rewarding in the sense uh, after, uh, after you've put in the hard work, the late nights. For the proud parents, they know their son's hard work has paid off. Like most of the time, 
he gets, we don't have to tell him. He gets up early in the morning or he will, uh, you know, studies late at night, you know. Yeah, he's a very good son. These new graduates will now be able to practice in all magistrates' courts across the country. They will then be allowed to take on high court matters after two to three years of legal practice. Catherine Krishna, FBC News. Turning overseas, English Prime Minister Theresa May is to continue meeting with MPs from all sides in a bid to find a way forward for Brexit. Following her slim victory in the no-confidence vote, May says she wants to approach the discussions in a constructive spirit. Coming up in sports later with Jamie, another win for Cristiano Ronaldo's team, but Rachel joins you now with business. Thanks Jacqueline, good evening and coming up after the break. SBSC Inc's MOU with Colombo Stock Exchange. And in growing Fiji, revenue and customs to enhance service delivery. Stay with us. Lola, I am Eleanor. For the best classic kids, I only listen to Gold FM here in Singapore. Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Seni Rawa. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osuri. Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Dino. I'm from Outrigger, Coraco, Singatoka. I love listening to Gold FM. All of the classic hits. My name is Salote. I love listening to Gold FM here in Missouri. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, my name is Marida. Gold FM plays the best classics here in Outrigger, Singatoka. Gold FM, only the classic hits. business tonight, the South Pacific Stock Exchange has expanded its information gathering pool through inking an MOU with the Colombo Stock Exchange. This MOU will assist the establishing mutual development opportunities in Fiji and the Sri Lankan capital markets. SBSC Chief Executive Krishika Narayan says the MOU enables the two exchanges to work together on cross-border collaboration of information and knowledge which can be which can enhance market development. The MOU can also facilitate staff secondment to further explore ways to share knowledge and means to develop their respective exchanges. And we now join Sean from HFC Bank with the latest from the money world. The US dollar took a breather today following its recent strong gains against key rivals. In focus, however, were concerns that the US government shutdown was taking a toll on its economy. The greenback largely held on to its gains against the euro amid persistent worries about the eurozone economy. The Japanese yen, a perceived safe haven in times of turmoil, edged higher against the dollar, partly off the back of worries. Meanwhile, the British pound was stable after Prime Minister Theresa May's government survived the no-confidence vote. The result means she stays in power for now. And that's all the latest from HFC Bank. Finaka. Thanks, Sean. On to the exchange rates as it was set this morning. It was a mixture on the currency markets. The VG dollar showed gains against our major trading partners, the Aussie and Kiwi dollar, as well as the Yand. It slipped slightly against the other currencies we cover. Taking a look at the commodity prices, it was a mix today with oil prices being up at $52.14 a barrel. Gold was also up at 1,294 per ounce and silver closed at 15.60 an ounce. And in growing Fiji tonight, the Fiji Revenue and Customs Service will enhance its service delivery through the Fiji Text Information System, which will be going live from the third quarter of this year. Chief Executive Vishwanath Bus says this service will serve as a portal that will contain current data of all taxpayers. Here's more details. The Fiji Tax Information System will basically take all taxpayer information online. But the employer is still responsible to submit electronic monthly schedules of the salary and wages they are paying to the employees. So that's where tax office is sort of hub of the information that is required for very many uh, uh, policies, government initiatives to help ordinary Fijians, you know, rely on. The portal enables all taxpayers to access data and make payments online, no longer needing to make visits to the tax office. If you need 18 letter, for that matter, you log into your portal, you can apply it online and it will be sent to your portal. 
For businesses, you require tax compliance certification. You go to your portal, apply for it. The system will process it right there and then. If, it, or if everything is good, you get your tax compliance certification. This portal is also aimed at benefiting a number of government initiatives. Electricity subsidy, you look at you know, water subsidy and all those things. So then the household income needs to be determined. So where do you get that information from? It comes to us. You know, all the employers, they lodge uh, salary information with the tax office. $48 million has been invested into the system. And that's a wrap from the business desk for tonight. Jamie joins you now with the very latest in sports. Thanks, Rachel. Mula in sports tonight. Nerio eager to return to the ring. The Sinwa coming up. I'm from Singatoka. I love listening to Mitch Shepherd. Mitch Shepherd is hot. I'm Charlene Robert, Mirchi FM, Rocks in Lambasa. I'm Sonamin, Nasori Jackson, Mirchi FM is hot. My name is Raymond Dutt, I'm in Baba Singh Alliance, Mirchi FM is hot in Lambasa. I'm Pritika from Jack's Nasori. I love listening to Mirchi FM here in Nasori. Mirchi FM is hot. Mirchi FM, it's hot. Fiji football star Roy Krishna is likely to be part of the national team again at the Olympic Games in Japan next year. Coach Christophe Gamel says if they do qualify from Oceania, he would love to have Krishna in the squad. Uh, our golden boy uh, Roy Krishna can, uh, can fit in. It will be super for us. Huh? But after it's a decision also with him, we have to discuss. Apart from Krishna, there are other senior players who could get a chance to represent the nation. Not too senior, the the best one of the, the country also to, to bring something extra, of course. I have my idea on that. Uh, let's, see, let's see if uh, in, uh, in uh, July after Mini Pacific game, the best three will be in this team. Huh? But for now, these young under 23 brigades need to work hard and first qualify as the Oceania's best team. Competition between players has been tough and uh, everybody's trying to make their place in the team. So yeah, it's been tough. The OFC Under-23 Championship, which will act as the Olympic qualifier, will be held in Fiji later this year. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. Cristiano Ronaldo's header was enough for Juventus to beat AC Milan and claim a record eighth Supercopa trophy. The Portugal forward nodding in a header in the second half of the match. The Fiji Rugby Union says nearly all its top players contracted abroad have confirmed their availability for the World Cup in Japan this year. Chief Executive Don O'Connor says they're working with the respective clubs and World Rugby to ensure that players are released on time. The Fiji Airways Flying Fijians is pooled with Australia, Wales, Georgia and Uruguay for the World Cup. They'll be held from the 20th of September to the 2nd of November. I know there was some uh, news about uh, players in UK. We're working with uh, World Rugby to resolve all those eh? And uh, yeah, we're just looking forward to the players coming home and preparing for the World Cup. Middle distance runner Petro Vitangomaki is the first from Athletics Fiji to book a place in the Pacific Games in July. The Maris Brothers High School student ran a time of 1 minute 53.39 seconds, beating the qualifying time of 1 minute 54.8 seconds in the 800 meters trial. Meli Tabanga reports. With Petro Vitangomaki confirmed for the Pacific Games, others now have one thing in mind that is to meet the criteria. He's qualified under A standard. Um, Athletics VG has reiterated that they will be only taking A qualifiers to the Pacific Games. Um, so, so far, no other athletes have qualified under the A standard uh, set out uh, in the selection criteria by Athletics VG. A few athletes have attained the B qualifiers, however, they will have to do better in the remaining trials. Including uh, Banu Getamakodore, who's on his way back uh, trying to make the qualifying, and also uh, Kameli Soundondua in the 400 meters. When it comes to preparation, everything seems to be going to plan. We've got to make sure that both mentally, physically, the athletes are prepared for Samoa. To do this, we have to keep our officials informed. Athletics Fiji will hold its second trial on the first week of next month.
Melita Banga, FBC Sports. Nereo, the Terminator, the Kautini, says he has finally got the match that will resurrect his boxing career. The New Town Boxing Club member is preparing to fight middleweight champion Abe Chand in the South Pacific Boxing Promotions event next month. After losing his last fight by points to Tomasi Ngonovo last year, Dakautini says he hopes to put on a great performance on the night and get his year off to a perfect start. I'm thankful for this opportunity and I'll try my best to make my coach and my family proud. I know I lost in my last fight, but I won't let this fight go past me easily. There have been no other surprises in the Australian Open since Andy Murray bowed out of the competition in the first round early this week. Top seeds Roger Federer, Rafael Nadal and women's defending champion Caroline Wozniacki are all through to the third round. Vasnil Prasad with more. Two wins in the bag. Roger Federer made a point to acknowledge his opponent after beating Dan Evans by three straight sets. And the perfect way to finish it with the most famous backhand in the game. It always helps when you... Yeah, sneak in a quick break, win that first set, and then, you know, maybe start pressing even more so. And uh, I might have had that, you know, obviously midway through the second set, and I think maybe if I, I'm able to close out that second set. Second seed Rafael Nadal also made it to the third round with a straightforward victory over his Australian counterpart. The Spaniard, a 17-time Grand Slam champion, overcame his 47th-ranked opponent, 6-3, 6-2, 6-2. I think I have been improving during during the match now, so that's that's important for me. I know every day is a is a test. In the women's category, defending champions Caroline Wozniacki is into the third round with a straight set win over her opponent. Made the pass brilliantly in the world number three. Expect another interesting round of tennis tonight when some of the best go against each other in Melbourne. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. In today's play of the day, banned Australian batsman David Warner smashed an audacious half century to lift his still hit sixes off the bottom of the Bangladesh Premier League table. The left handed batsman changed his stance to right handed and belted West Indian Chris Gale for a six and two fours on his way to 61 not out as they reached 187 for five. That's it from Sports Tonight. Angie joins you later on with weather and then new media. A look at the world's most intelligent fitness system. Details after the break. My name is Nan, I'm from Bualumbuase. Freni North is famous, Radio Fiji 2 is also famous. Radio Fiji 2 is the country of the country. Sima Nakasi, I like Radio Fiji 2 to listen to the country of the country of the country of the country. I'm Uncle King, singer of the town, taxi driver, from the rugby family, from the Radio Fiji 2 family. Radio Fiji 2, the country of the country. In tonight's new media, Tonal is the world's most intelligent fitness system. It is a digital weight machine with personal training built in. It's weather time now with Angie. Hello there and welcome to the weather world. Hope you're doing great this evening and arrived home safely and dryly after the massive downpour. Well, we had some great sunshine for days. It was so good for jogging, farming and you name it. But now rainy spells have taken over. Taking a look in the west, so pretty and gorgeous conditions. Great day for picking Evie up as it's the season for it. Eastwards from Pak Habarusuva, it was slightly cooler but sunnier throughout the day. More showers swinging by later tonight. And up north, sunny spells were quite comfortable. Perfect for your holiday if you're on one. At sea, southeast winds gusting 10 to 50 knots, moderate to rough seas. For the tides, low tide at 10.35 p.m. with high tide at 5.39 a.m. Sunrise at 5.44. For tomorrow, quite fast, but it's Friday again and yet this will be another Friday where rain will be with us. 
tomorrow's temps mostly ranging in the low 30 degree range. And looking further on to Saturday, keep your umbrellas handy as showers will roll in, so I guess it's back to the rain season again. And that's all from the FBC Weather World. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fijian Pulse tonight, we asked, how do you think Fiji will benefit from Australia's Prime Minister's visit? The coming of the Australian Prime Minister will allow many Australian tourists and also allow Fijians to go and work in Australia through seasonal work. This is something Fijians should look forward to and hoping the visit will give us a positive feedback in the growth of our economy. I hope that his visit will open doors for us to work in Australia and Australia to be a visa-free country for us. Recapping the main stories for tonight, new relationship dubbed as Buvale Partnership, more than a thousand complaints against landlords received and shocking child cases recorded in 2018. Now for these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station Gold FM. To our poll question segment this week, we're asking, has daylight savings been effective? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, our shot of the day, a beautiful shot of the sun taken at the Hilton Hotel Denarau Nandi was sent in by Davina Andrews. Remember, you can send us news, weather, pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at fbc underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight from the team and I. Good night. Bula, never go Malakai Leloma, go in Nakas, on the Wagrong and Bula Fib, Nabondo and a serie. Oya was it says, Lombasa, and the Teletan of Rome and Bula Fem, Nabado and a serie. We have a Timeli, a Quanatau no Hinatoka, Teletakina of Rome and Bula Fem, Nabando and a serie. Never go find in a town of Singatoka, Kit on the Teletakanambula Fem, Nabando and a serie. Bula Fem, Nabado and a serie.